Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Lady the Coder. In today's lecture, we're going to be talking about dynamic contents and ReactJS, how we can render the contents or JSX dynamically using the state. So let's just dive into the lecture. In the previous lecture, we talked about JSX and we also seen how to create class components and we dealt with some dynamic components, but those are basically not really dynamic. We're not looping or doing some something like that. So in this lecture, what we'll do is I'll just get rid of this code for now and I'll just close the site table. Also, I'll get rid of this and also this. So in the state, we have some posts. We have a list of posts over here and it's basically an um, array of objects over here. So every post would have an ID, it would have a title, it would have a body. So this is basically one post and we'll create another post over here. We'll change the ID to two. We'll name it second post. And you'll see this is my second post. I'll also create a third post over here and I'll call it ID would be three. And I'll change this to third post and I'll just call it third post. Yeah. So now in order to access this, I can simply make use of the curly braces within the JSX component. And I can simply do this dot state dot posts. But since these are three posts and basically it's an array. So in order to render them using the JSX, we can simply loop through the posts. So I'll just make a space over here just to make it more clear. So if you guys are familiar with the, with the map function, you can see there's a function that accepts up to three arguments. The map method calls the callback function sometimes for each element in the array, calls a defined callback function on each element of an array and returns an array that contains the results. So basically we have access to each elements, which is basically a post and we can simply return the post, but in here, we want to return a JSX instead of returning that specific element. So we can simply say return. So as we've seen, if we return a JSX element, we can also, we can make it part of this. And since we have three properties over here, that is basically the ID, title, and body. So it totally makes sense to unwrap them in an element. For now, I'll just use dev for this. And I'll do this. First thing first, on the return statement, whatever is the primary um, element, you'll have to specify a key, which is basically used by React internally. And you can simply use the post.id. So the key should be unique for each element that you're returning from this array. So you can either make use of the post.id since, since this is basically unique, or you can use the second argument of the math function that is basically the index of the element. You can also make use of the index and uh, you can also make use of the post.id because this is unique as well. But the question is why the key is needed. So basically keys help React identify which items have changed or added or removed. So basically, when you perform some operation, for example, you render the list and for example, you remove some element from the list. So this is basically with this the help with the help of this key, React identifies, OK, which element has been removed or if you add more elements to the to the list dynamically. So React knows which elements are added or removed from the DOM tree. And in here we can return, for example, H1, we can see ID. You can say ID number to something. And, and here I can use the curly braces just because we are uh, resolving an expression over here. And I can say post.id for the disk for the title. I'll use an H3 tag and I'll use the title, post.title, and I'll rename it to title. The third one. Should be description and i'll change this to body because that is the description when i save this 
you'll see the list of the posts over here. So yeah, we have successfully rendered our dynamic contents from the state. I can also apply some inline CSS just to make them look a little bit nicer. So I can simply do style, okay? And the style except um, basically an object and that is not similar to the style that we use in HTML. So here you can also specify the CSS properties, but make sure that you uh, oh, use the curly braces once and then in the curly braces you need to pass an object. So in here you have to specify the CSS properties now. So for now I'll use border and I'll give it a string that is basically this and I'll make a black border over here around this and you can see the, the, the border around all of the posts over here. As a matter of fact, for example, let's just get rid of the key from here and when I save this file, when I inspect it, you'll get an error over here which says each child in the list should have a unique key property. So basically React asks you to add that, prop that key property because React won't be able to identify which elements are may change to in the future. So that's why we need to specify the key property over here. So this is the end of the lecture and I hope you have learned something new in this lecture. Please like and share the video, subscribe to the channel and make sure you press the bell icon for the future updates and until then I'll see you in the next lecture.